okay, let's clear out some of these graphics on our images and replace our male athlete with the female. And you will notice her right hip is now flexed in front. Her left leg is now extended behind her. Her right shoulder is now extended behind her. And her left shoulder is now flexed in front. So she is in the exact opposite position now as the image we started with on the left. And let's go ahead and place some lines on her. This line is where her arms attach out at the shoulder joints. This line is where the legs attach out at the hip joints. And this is her midline where all of these torques are acting around. Now in the image on the left, we saw the right leg powered by the glutes and hams, quads and calves was pushing from behind and it created a counterclockwise torque shown here in red. In the image on the right, this right hip is flexed pulling her forward now from the front and is also creating a counterclockwise torque shown in red. So the direction of torque produced by the right leg does not change regardless of which position it's in. It's always generating a counterclockwise torque. And this is just another little tip to keep in mind. Moving on with the image on the left, we saw the left leg powered by the hip flexors was pulling her forward from the front and it created a clockwise torque seen here in yellow. In the image on the right, this same left leg is now extended and pushing her from behind, and it too is creating a clockwise torque shown in yellow. So the direction of torque produced by the left leg does not change either, regardless of which position it's in. It's always generating a clockwise torque, and this, once again, is another little tip to keep in mind. Continuing with the image on the left, we saw the right arm powered by the shoulder flexors and left arm powered by the shoulder extensors were both pulling on our athlete in what looked to be opposite directions to each other. But in reality, both were twisting her in the same counterclockwise direction shown here in red. Now, however, in the image on the right, her right arm and left arm also look like they are working in opposite directions to each other. But in reality, they are both twisting her in the same direction but this time it's the clockwise direction shown here in yellow. And finally, we had the last torque powered by the spine rotators on the right side of the body, twisting the torso in the same counterclockwise direction as the arms. But this time with the arm position switched, it's the spinal rotators on the left side of the body that are twisting the torso in the clockwise direction to once again match up with the direction of the arms. Now let's replace the image on the left with the male athlete, where his arm and leg positions match up with those of the female athlete on the right. And in doing so, we see torque number one on her is for the right hip flexors, in red for counterclockwise, will be the same for him. And let's write that down below. Next, we see torque number two on her for the left glutes and hams, quads and calves, in yellow for clockwise, will be the same on him. And let's write that down below. Then we see torque number three on her for the right shoulder extensors in yellow for clockwise will also be the same on him. And let's put that down below. Now, before moving on to the next torque, I'm gonna to go ahead and draw the path of this one out just a bit wider, as well as all the way around until it meets up with the other yellow clockwise torques in front. And the reason I am doing this is so that you will be able to see its relationship with them a little better here in just a minute. Okay, so continuing on after that, we see torque number four on her for the left shoulder flexors in yellow for clockwise will once more be the same on him. And let's put that down below. And finally, we see torque number five on her for the left spine rotators in yellow for clockwise will be the same on him. And let's write that down below. And looking at our male athlete, we see we have four torques working in the same direction. So we know their effect is once again cumulative, seen here. And so we can place a plus sign between them all down below. And now, here come the hip flexors on the right side of his body, this time in red for counterclockwise, working all alone like I told you previously these muscles did. And since this is the only torque working in this direction, it must be strong enough all by itself to push back against the combined strength of the other four with equal strength, if the goal of the person is to move in a straight path. And since this is the case with these athletes, 
We can then place an equal sign here as well as down below showing this relationship. And this is also indicated here in the middle with our key that shows how all of the counterclockwise torques are equal to all of the clockwise torques. So this is the other pattern of torque your body uses when it runs. And we could also call this the ultimate running speed equation. So these are the two and only two patterns of torque your body generates while running. And this is its way of telling you in plain sight everything it needs to be successful. It's telling you it needs the glutes and hams, quads and calves, hip flexors, shoulder flexors, shoulder extensors, and spine rotators to be quick and strong on both sides of your body. Now, it is at this point in my training session that I need to stop and take a little break from sharing anything new with the person or persons I am working with and really do my best to solidify their understanding of these torques and how they are needed to help them run faster. Otherwise, they aren't going to accept any of my speed training recommendations, which, as you might have guessed, are based on improving their torque, and they're going to end up right back inside a squat rack, cranking out as many reps as they can as their only option to get faster. And while I fully support that in similar exercises, they absolutely must get in their heads that the glutes and hams, quads and calves are just one piece of a much larger torque puzzle when it comes to speed training. So what I do to really help cement this understanding in their minds is take them through an exercise, a sort of testing procedure to see if they can simply recognize which pattern of torque an athlete is in and identify the muscles they're using at that moment. And I do this by showing them various clips of some of the best sprinters and middle distance runners in the United States because their torque output is really high and really balanced. And once I see where they can quickly spot this in successful athletes, then I know my training recommendations are likely to be followed. And so that is what I'm going to do with you right now. I'm going to show you some clips of American athletes running and going through their torque patterns with you. But before I do that, I need to show you a quick and easy way of identifying which torque pattern an athlete is in. And it's based on the understanding of just a couple of key points involving the legs. All right, that's going to do it for this video. You can access the link to the next part in this series, as well as all 12 parts in the description below. Now, before I go, I want to say that if you liked my video, then please click the like button. Feel free to share it wherever you want and leave me a question or comment as I'll be sure to get to it as soon as possible. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and follow Athletic Quickness on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our speed training tips, articles, and exercises. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.